Well, hello everyone. I am Joe Flick with the Montana State Library. I'm the CE coordinator. And today I wanna talk to you a little bit about myself, introduce myself to you, and also tell you what uh, the State Library does in terms of promoting um, continuing education and professional development for librarians in Montana. So let me tell you first a little bit about me. I go to a lot of these online meetings, this picture of our staff at an online meeting. I didn't get permission from any of them to use this, so hopefully they're all okay with it. <laughs> anyway, I plan training events for the State Library. I help trainers on our State Library to, uh, uh, let me just see, there's one more person coming joining in that right now. Um, I help our trainers at the State Library to design effective training. My background is actually in instructional design. That's where my master's is, not in library science. So I'm not a subject matter expert on libraries at all, but I, I am a subject matter expert on how people learn. And so I do help try to help our trainers to prepare um, effective training events. Um, I also schedule those events and hire trainers for uh, events around the state. And I am, one of my principal jobs is evaluating our training activities at the State Library. So anytime you get a survey um, asking your, how things went or we're um, asking you for more information following a training, that's usually, whether it's coming from any of our trainers, it usually started with me. I develop and manage, um, I see I have a typo in there, develop and manage, not manage, manage certif the certification program. And I am a teleworker and this is what I do, go to a lot of meetings like this and, um, and do trainings online. I've actually earned my master's degree online. So, and I've taught online courses for community college here in Montana. So that's sort of my orientation. By the way, you will be getting a new CE coordinator soon because I'm going to be retiring at the end of the year. So a uh, big plug out there if you're interested in working for the State Library and have um, an interest, affinity, and some training and training, maybe you'll consider applying for my job after I leave. Uh, it's a great job. So just a little bit more about me. I live next to Glacier National Park in East Glacier, Montana, East Glacier Park, Montana. This is a picture from the webcam at the Two Medicine Campground, just about 12 miles north of me. And I am a gardener. That's a photo on the upper right of a bunch of my um, seedlings getting started, which I do every uh, late winter, get things started. I am a owner of two lovely cats. Um, that is my Mr. Boo cat. He is almost a constant companion. Uh, he's not here today at my office, but he often is. And I'm an artist. My first degree was actually in art and I love to paint watercolors on site. And that's actually a little painting I did for a niece of mine when I was at Niagara Falls uh, a few years ago. But I, you'll always see me on the trail with my watercolors and often sitting down and just painting wherever I end up. It's one of my favorite things to do and hoping to do a lot more of that um, when I retire. So that's a little bit about me. And today I just wanted you to, to help you find training events that meet your professional development needs. I wanna introduce you to our Moodle space, which we are just launching now at the State Library. This is an online course system that will hopefully really improve the kinds of trainings that we're able to provide to librarians across Montana. I'm gonna give you a very quick overview of the new strategic track to certification as we sort of move from Moodle into the Moodle learning into the certification program and the new strategic track. So I'll walk you through how that's gonna work. And then I'm gonna just hopefully help you get started on your certification. Certification in Montana is required for public library directors under our state standards, our newly revised state standards. It's been that way for a while and it was kept in place um, with the new standards. It's voluntary for everybody else. That includes volunteers, um, 
library staff and library boards, but we actually have at any one time in Montana several hundred librarians that have active certification that they've acquired that not necessarily because it was required of them, but they have wanted to gain that that credential. So I manage that system and I'll walk you through a little bit and be happy, hopefully leave a little bit of time for questions and answers at the end. So from that, I'm going to go switch to my um, information start with that let's find training events you probably have noticed i often referencing when i'm posting about our training events our vimeo channel that the state library maintains and when we set up this channel golly it was 10 years ago the first thing we did was we decided that every video that went into it because it's mostly training videos that those training videos would could be um, searched by group. So Vimeo has two kind of collections options uh, in their system. One is a showcase and the other is a group. And so we've kept just four groups in our Vimeo channel and they're all organized by the four categories for certification, four categories for training that are required under our certification. So I'm just going to pop this link into the chat box so that you can um, go take a look at it, but more importantly, maybe bookmark it. It's a little hard to find on your own, so that's why I think it's helpful to um, have it bookmarked. So that way, when you're looking for training, uh, say a recording, if you're a credit short or two credits short in a specific category, you can always come to this place and look for recorded videos. I will caution you, there is a rule in the certification program that uh, you should watch a webinar within one year of its recording. We do want most of your, we want your, your training to be current and relevant training. So we'd like you to watch those webinars within a year of their recording. They're often posted here for longer than that. But, um, oh, I'm sorry that you had trouble, Emily. I will um, I will double check that link. I may have, I, I apologize for that. Uh, I just saw a comment come into the chat box on, on our link for this week. Um, well, the recording for this will be uh, posted in today's event, the 25th. I hopefully, I'm sorry, I screwed that up. Anyway, here are the four categories and that link is in the chat. And if you, um, are watching the recording, you can check back for the description in the recording and the link to this page will be there. So that makes it easy for you to find training, but do pick something that's recent. The other thing is that all CE credits expire when they're four years old. So at 48 months, 49 months, they are no longer, they won't apply to your certification. So when you do uh, choose training, training, try to always as for your certification, you're welcome to do extra training beyond your certification, of course, but if you're choosing training for your certification, try to choose things that were recently recorded, whether it's one of our recordings or some other provider. So the next thing I wanted to do is introduce you to our Moodle site, because we're going to be finding more and more training there. This is my login page, so hopefully you're all seeing that and this is what your dashboard looks like it's going to change a little we're redesigning the graphics here in moodle but um, right now you'll we'll be highlighting uh, current courses or active courses on this page so right now you can see there's a transforming teen services youth development course that amelia kim is heading up um, and she's got this new course called Library Spark. It's an entrepreneurial support um, uh, course that she is working with um, an outside provider, a, a partner to develop. This Fundamentals of Librarianship is a course is an eight part self paced course. It's intended for new staff at libraries or especially staff that have not um, attended library school. This is a training that we're doing for um, a group of 
of facilitators from about five different states or five, yeah, five, uh, some state library staff that were facilitating. And that's going to kind of allow me to switch into this sort of segue into the strategic track because in you can earn your certification a couple different ways in the state with the state library. One is you can earn 60 credits with a minimum of 20 in the library administration category and a minimum of 10 in the other three categories and then as many electives as you want up at, but at least 60 total and that will earn you a library administrator certificate a library staff certificate is 10 credits in each cat of the four categories and 20 elective credits so a minimum of 60 and uh you just um put in all of those credits into aspen and i'll walk you through that in just a second and then you um, submit your application for certification and I review them and we get someone, your, a supervisor of yours to verify those credits and then your certificate's issued and it's good for four years. But the strategic track is a new option and it's only for those that have previously earned a certificate. So it's for a renewal certificate only. It involves you creating a professional development plan of your very own that meets your personal needs, but is linked to your library's strategic goals. So the professional development plan right here allows you to write and upload your professional development plan in Moodle. And Moodle is a courseware system. It's used for college courses all the time, um, but we're using it here to kind of help you keep track of the things you have to do. So we have you fill out a little form and affirm that you're eligible to utilize the strategic track. And then I'm just gonna kind of go into this one so you can see you write and upload your professional development plan. So there's a template here. I'm gonna click on that. Hopefully it loads, oh, it lets you download it. So we'll just put it on my desktop. Of course. I already have one on my desktop. And then um, it's right, it's downloaded right here so I can show it to you. Microsoft Word is opening, just a second. Okay, I'll bring it over to the screen so you can see it. So this is the template form for you to fill out. You, you list an outcome they expect to achieve it. So you don't have to use the, the CE categories to frame your certification, but you do have to use your library's goals to frame your uh, certification. So you have to create a, tell us why you're using the, this plan, this pathway to certification. And then you have to list an impact that your learning is likely going to have on your library's abilities to, to achieve their strategic goals. And then this is kind of the important part. You're going to be listing and planning ahead the learning activities you have in mind. You can be a little bit general here, but you should be as specific as you can be. So and a learning activity might be something like um, I knew a librarian recently who um, wanted to really s s um, focus on genealogy. She wanted to be uh, her library's one of the library's goals was to become a genealogy research center in their community. And so um, her strategic goal was to gain a genealogy on oh, I'm this is one word I have a terrible time spelling. Let's see if I get it right this time. Uh, I didn't. Um, it's always it's like they did it. Okay. Yeah, we'll just go with that for now. But Jane gain a GIA certificate. And I believe her certificate came from a university. So we'll just make one up from let's see. Indiana. That's my alma mater university. Okay, so this was um, this particular study course was 20 college credits it was a pretty intense course. 
20 college credits actually equals 60 credits um, under our system. And it's related to the library's goal of being uh, um, genealogy research center. And we're gonna say that's actually 60 credits. So that would actually qualify her for certification based just on that. Well, that's an example of how you complete the form. You could have more activities than that. Maybe you might want to um, shadow a gene genealogist. Okay, I did. Ah, now it spelled it right. And um, you would say maybe you were going to spend uh, 10 hours working with a genealogist. So that would be, let's see. So you th say you're going to spend uh, nine hours with the genealogist. That would be worth three credits because every, when you're doing self-guided um, non-informal training, you can do that in this, in this strategic track, but you can only claim one credit for each hour worked. And this is related to the same library goal. So we'll just add the two. So nine hours and that would be three credits. So you would just go through and just kind of make a plan. Now it's hard to really imagine and get a plan for four years of your professional development. So there is an option in the strategic path to modify your plan. So your plan just has to be approved by your super, by your library director, I should say. Your library director has to be okay with you um, going out into this, um, into this realm of directing your own learning and creating your own learning path. But our intention with this strategic path, um, strategic track, I should say, is is really that you not be constrained by the four categories and instead your learning is really targeted to helping your library to do well. All right, hopefully that's that's really the nuts and bolts of that. The, um, I'm not gonna save this. Uh, you, will, you would then be uploading this submission into Moodle, and then I'll see that. Um, it's gonna, Moodle's gonna tell you what you need to do next. Uh, there's actually a little discussion forum built into this track, so you can ask other people um, their opinion or help them get some help with creating your professional development plan. So that's Moodle, a little bit about that. Boy, my time is going fast. I just wanted to walk through getting started on your CE in Aspen. So let's do that over here too. Oh, one other thing about where to go to find training. Every month, let's see, I've got the wrong one. You can go to the, let's see, MSL trainer wordpress.com. Every month I post a whole list of free webinars. You might have noticed those emails passing by, but I also post them to my blog. So let me put this link into the chat. So you can always cycle back through a couple of months on the blog and find um, this month I put spectacular online learning for librarians, a little Halloween theme there, and see all of the training that's been going on recently. You can scroll back for a few months. You can also use this um, little word uh, wordle here on the side to try to find things that are uh, maybe a topic that you particularly like in the in the uh, WordPress collection of things. So that that um, link will also be listed in the description if you're watching the recording for today. So let's move on to Aspen and how you get started with certification. Once you have a login with Aspen and you can see that I'm logged in over here, there's no there's a there's a login button here that I'm not logged in. Then all you have to do is use the blue menu on the right and click on continuing education. I've got three minutes to do this. I'm gonna leave five minutes for questions and answers. 
Continuing education, this little um, form allows you to add in uh, events. These are all listed in reverse chronolo chronological order, starting with today's event right here. Although if you're watching, if you're viewing, if you're here live, I will be marking your attendance so you don't need to do anything. Um, but if you're watching the recording, you have to go in and uh, and claim this credit. So you would just scroll down to the most to the credit. If you're watching any recorded um, webinar, see what the date was that that webinar was recorded, and then you can scroll back to it and claim any of these. Then you just, I mean, since I am earning credit today, actually I did last week too. Let's do this one for last week. Hit the go button. And you'll see I did attend this session last week. It's October 18th. I just have to hit that. This is really important. You have to hit that save button. And then you'll notice that Aspen is a little slow. This little winding wheel at the top is there. And all this is the whole record for that particular credit. So going back over here to my continuing education page, you will notice down here below the part, the pane that allows you to add credits is the pane that allows you to add a certification track. Now you can collect credits in Aspen, but until you've actually told Aspen which track that you are going for, it won't display your credits for you because Aspen's gonna actually, it's got this little um, progress bar built in and it's keeping track of how you're doing on your certificates. So you always have to add down here, add a certification track if you don't already have one in Aspen. Um, and there are directions for how to do that over here in the Aspen help section. It's called getting started with CE and I'm going to give you a link. It's over here in our knowledge base and choose Aspen and under continuing education, it's not right up front, getting started with continuing education right there. So I'm going to copy that link, put it in the chat, and that'll also be in the description for today's session if you're watching the recording. So that puts me at 355, which is right where I needed to be. And so I have time for some questions and answers if anyone's interested in, in that. So that's, oh, I'm gonna take one more minute because Aspen does have this one extra feature for collecting CE credits. And that's the in the event calendar. It's kind of a quick way to get a credit posted in Aspen. So you load the, you have to be logged in for this to work. And if you, scroll down below the actual event calendar, which is kind of loading right now, you're gonna see all of these events listed um, pretty much forever. The ones that are listed in the drop-down box uh, that I just showed you are only listed there for a year. But if you wanna find something that's older than a year, go ahead and open up, oh, and it's gonna lock up on me. The events calendar, give it a second, it might just be a little slow today, scroll down below the events calendar and you will see in reverse there, they are reverse chronological order, all of the events. I always like to change this to about a hundred or something. So we get a good long list. And this green button over here on the side will, uh, will add that event for you to your CE list. So like um, here's that getting to know you session from last week. I'll go ahead and put in my credit for today just by adding CE credit. You get this little box that says, are you sure? And you say, yeah, because it's easy to kind of click on something wrong. And then it'll again take me to that page to confirm it. So that's pretty much all I have to share with you today about continuing education. And I'll be happy to take your questions. Yeah, Myra here. Um, how does all this apply to board members? And also, I have a lot of webinars I watched, but I don't think they're recorded on my record. Ah, so all you have to know is what date those webinars you and Myra, I know you mostly go to our webinars. Do you attend webinars from other 
providers besides the state library or they're mostly just the state library ones just the state library then really all you need to do is add your track and one of the tracks that we have is for board members it's the trustee track okay, and trustee. so yeah, it's right in this blue box over here under continuing education and i'll show you that and down here under certification track and you add a certification track there's the trustee track there's actually if if I didn't have all these tracks already, I'd have a longer drop down box. But this is the only track I don't, or one of the only tracks I don't have listed right now. So you just select that one and okay. click go. And okay. um, it'll ask you what start date you want to use for the start of your track. And that's just so that um, it can keep track of how your progress that you're making. So you could backdate that start date as long as you wanted to. And you're, for trustees, the requirement is you have to have a minimum of 10 library administration credits and five of any else. And oh, by the way, where would you find that information? You might want to know. So I'm just going to do a Google search here on Montana State Library certification. Oh, I can't spell library. I can't talk and spell at the same time. <laughs> certification manual and there it is so all of our rules are um, because they're kind of a like they're official policies state policies um, we do have a printed online certification manual and the print you can print it out but you don't need to you can just go and i'll put this link in the chat as well anytime you have a question it's probably an answered in the manual a lot of times when people send me questions about almost anything i will answer it and then point them to where you can find it in the manual. Like for instance, um, people will talk about, you know, I don't know what, what category this training belongs in, especially if they go to training that's out of state. All of our trainings, the category is always mentioned in it. But if you wonder what it, continuing education category is right, there's one page in the manual that ex explains exactly that, the four categories collection management, technical services, technology, library administration service, with some examples of what fits into each one. I use this page all the time because it's kind of hard sometimes to figure out what category. Like for instance, copyright, which I almost think would fit into collection management and technical services is actually under library services to the public. So I reference this all the time. And if we've forgotten our password, Oh, well, that's you can get it reset. There's an option to reset your password. Okay. Yeah, and I would say the one the one thing about Aspen that you have to really like retrain yourself is never to use this login button up here, which is kind of intuitive. It's at the top of the screen where you expect the login to be login button to be it's way over to the right where you expect the login button to me but you always want to go to aspen first at aspen.mt.gov and use the login button that appears in the yellow menu item to the right not the one at the top and the reason for that is that when you're at this page and you use this login button It'll direct you out to our ePass system, which is the statewide authentication system. You'll enter your information and it'll bring you back to this page. So you'll be able to start. If you use the button at the top, it will direct you to the state's e-commerce page, which gets you to, you know, you can file your taxes and, you know, do a report on your range land activities or whatever that you might do with state government besides um, enter your credits with us. So it's just a kind of a, um, a tip there that you should always use the login button that's in the yellow box and be at aspen.mt.gov when you start. Any other questions? 
Well, I'm going to go ahead and stop our recording then. And thank you so much for joining me today or watching our recording and learning about CE. My um, contact information, which I'm just going to show here briefly, is um, jflick at mt.gov. And that's probably the quickest way to reach me, but you're also welcome to call or text 406-431-1081. And of course, as of today, you have to always dial the 406 in Montana. <laughs> So um, I'm really looking forward to my last couple months as your CE coordinator. I have a lot of things on my plate to finish up, including um, I've got disaster training planning coming up, disaster planning training coming up in December. So I'm working on that and lots more stuff for our Moodle space as well. So thank you very much. Have a great day. Thanks, Joe.